Hi, I'm Don at UniqueParts.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Smart Electric Brake Light Switch Assembly, and it's going to be installed on a 62 Bug. Now, I'm going to show you the kit and what comes in that kit before we get to that installation. Here's the way the kit is sent out. Here is your Smart Electric Brake Light Switch Assembly here. It comes with a dust cover on the top. I can show you here. It comes with the interlocking actuator that goes onto your brake push rod. Also, there's a wiring harness. The connectors are already installed. This is what will go from the switch up into your trunk area and then connect to your fuse panel. I've also enclosed, included this piggyback uh, connector and uh, we have a pigtail connector also. We have a couple of sheet metal screws and a couple connectors that go with the wiring harness. Also in this kit I've included is the master cylinder barrel spacers. Now the factory insists that these barrel spacers be installed whenever you take the master cylinder out. So I've included these in the kit in case they've fallen down inside the pan. Okay, let's go back. We're going to go over to the installation and then we'll come back and discuss uh, a few more of the uh, yeah, details about the product after the installation. I'm Don at Unique Parts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the smart electric brake light switch onto the 62 bug and uh, what we do first off is we take off the dust cover here and uh, take off the switch so we just have the bare bracket and we're going to take off the swing arm also here. Just like so. Now, I'll show you where that bracket is going to go. It's going to mount right up in here where the master cylinder bolts are right there. So what I'll do is I'll take those master cylinder bolts out now and then we will put our barrel spacers in and then tighten that up. Now we're removing the master cylinder bolts and uh, we'll check to see if this car has those master cylinder barrel spacers and that is included in the kit so in case they've dropped into the pan we have them ready to go right back in. Now the master cylinder is just going to hang in there because you have your brake lines and everything attached to it so it's not going to go anywhere. You see the barrel spacers are not here and that's really, really important. So I'll get those now. So what you do is you put the bolts into the bracket and then put the barrel spacers onto the bolts and now you put it right up against the pan so you know that those barrel spacers are not going to fall down in the pan. And then you just tighten up the, the bolts. Get that started. So you see why we have to pull the pedal assembly out because, uh, and that's what we've done on this one before we did this, so we have plenty of room to get in here and work and then to make sure that these barrel spacers are in place. So now we'll just tighten those up and now our bracket's just going to be right where it's supposed to be so you can snug it up nicely and it's not being drawn into the pan. Yeah, so now we're nice and tight. Right there. Just a little more snug. Okay. Alright. Okay, now we'll go to the next step. Now you'll notice on the bracket that there's two holes here, one here and one here. And that the purpose of those is we are going to be putting sheet metal screws, drilling a small hole in the pan right here and there, then using sheet metal screws to hold the bracket in place. So if you ever have to take out the master cylinder, now the bracket will stay in position and also the barrel spacers are still going to stay in position too. So it's a real it's a, it's a nice uh, benefit to, to putting the bracket on there. Okay, I'm going to drill the holes now and then we'll put the sheet metal screws in. Okay, we drilled the hole here and 
now we drilled it there, now we'll put the sheet metal screws in. Okay, we're putting that last sheet metal screw in place. And then we'll be ready to go back in with the pedal assembly. Okay, almost there. All right. Look how nice that looks right in there. Just fits right in that spot. Okay, we're going to go back in with the pedal assembly now and continue on. Okay, now we're ready to go back in with the pedal assembly. And this one's just been serviced. It's uh, in excellent shape. So we're going in with the one of our other products too, which is the upgraded clutch shaft here. And we'll show you how that goes on. And the cable is in good shape. It's, uh, it's, it's new. So I'll show you how we do that next. So we're going to put the cable on. I just pulled it, as you notice right here, out of the tunnel. So that's how we install it. And we put grease around this. Yeah, the inside of the brass bushing and that little grease on the outside like that and then we just attach our cable it slides right over and we put our flat washer on and then we put the nut on it's a nylon nylock nut and then we just tighten that up we got that done. Okay, we've tightened that up. You can see how that works. Don't have to worry about trying to keep the cable on the hook because this new design, uh, this becomes a bearing now. It's very, very smooth. So that part's ready to go in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the upgrade speedball, which gets rid of the Z-bar linkage. So I'll show you those components and how those go on right now. We'll put those on before we put the pedal in. Yeah, our speedball kit comes with accelerator cable, comes with aluminum flat pedal, and a twin arm here with a uh, Delrin roller ball here. It makes it really, really smooth. So we're putting all the upgrades on this car here now. So we'll show you how that all goes together. Okay, the speedball comes with the a new pivot pin here with an e-clip so take that e-clip off just set it down there and then take your pin out and we'll put just a little grease on this pin here okay I've installed the speedball arm here now the pin goes in from the pan side out and this is where the e-clip goes on the pin right here so it keeps everything in place now the pan is going to push up against the pin on the pan side so it's always going to stay there so now we can just slide the pedal assembly back into place see how nicely that goes we don't have to worry about somebody grabbing the cable so now I'll just finish bolting this up okay I'm tightening up the Metal assembly bolts to the pan now, so I uh, got the pedal assembly secured in here, and now we'll put that brake spring on. And, and, okay, now you can see the speed balls in here. How oh, that works there. Okay, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I took a screwdriver underneath the spring right here and flipped it over the back side of the brake, brake arm. So that's, that's ready to go there. So now we'll get our brake push rod, put that in place, and then we'll proceed to finish up this insulation here. So we'll go on the next step. Okay, our, our next step is to take the brake push rod here, get a measurement from, take a rule and rule from here to here. So now we can get our our push rod here, the exact position that we took off. So I put a little liquid wrench here to loosen up the bolt, or probably the nut, so we can get this rod out. And then we go on with the uh, interlocking actuator. So see, that's coming off nicely there. So I'll just take this all apart. Okay, so we have one part of the brake push rod. Now we put our interlocking actuator here, and it fits right inside there, like that. And then we put the rod back on 
like so. Okay, like that. Okay, and that's our position. We'll tighten that up and uh, we're ready to go. That's where we were at before we tore it apart. So now we're ready to install this inside the car. Okay, I've got the brake push rod ready to go in, so what we'll do is we slide it into the master cylinder and uh, find the position there. Now this clip here that holds the pin in, this pin, that clip has to go here on the outside, not the inside. So this is where that clip has to go. Then that'll come down over and hold that pin in place. So just find the the hole we want right here. There we go. See, now we're in right there. I move the uh, throttle back. And so what we'll do is we'll just take the hammer and pound that over and you'll see how that holds that in. So I'll get the hammer now and we'll do that. Okay, there's that clip that's holding the push rod in. So we'll just pound it like this and then take a pry bar and just to bend that up against that surface so now you see that pin's not going to back out and that's the way the factory designed it and they, the way they want it to work. So now you can see the way the actuator is here. Uh, we've got the bracket in place so now we can go ahead and put the swing arm on next and we'll show you where it's side of that swing arm that's supposed to be on. Okay? Okay, here's the swing arm and the swing arm has a short end and the long end and the long end goes on the bottom and the long end is going to go up against this side here. That's a side facing U. So you just uh, slide the swing arm in and put the shoulder bolt in. Tighten it down and here's an Allen wrench. Just snug it. You don't have to get too crazy on tightening it, okay? Or over tightening it. That's just a snug, nice, tight feel. Okay, now, let me just show you that again. Here's the swing arm. It's on this side right here, okay? Now, we take our switch, and we screw our switch in, and screw it all the way in. And you see it's even got a lock nut on it, so that'll keep it from moving. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, now that's, we're just getting set up here, so now we're starting to make contact with the arm right here. Okay, that's pretty well set right there. So now when I press the pedal, see the arm moves. See how that works? That's the way the actuator, the swing arm works up against the switch. So what we'll do is we'll set this brake prelate. See, we already measured this arm, and that's pretty good setting right there for where we're supposed to be. Okay, now we're going to take the wiring harness now, and we're going to hook it up to the switch and then feed it up inside the trunk area. So, and uh, we're just, we'll hook it up temporarily because we may have to turn the switch in or out. So, but we'll do that right now. Okay, right there, got it. Okay, I've got the wires hooked up. Now we're going to take the black duct tape here, and we're just going to tape it up against the, the pan right here at this level. And then we're going to feed it up into the truck trunk area right up and through here where the main wiring harness comes down. So I'll tape this up right now, and you'll see what that looks like. Okay, take your screwdriver. This is where the main harness comes out from underneath the uh, inside the car to the where the fuse panel's at. So just take your screwdriver like this, just widen the hole just a little bit because that's where our cable is going to come through. So I'll go inside the car and feed that out. Okay, I pull the wires through here now and uh, this is where the fuse panel's at. So we're going to connect up into one of the wires here. So now I'm going to go back inside the car and we're going to use the duct tape and just place the wires in place against there so they won't move. Then we can put our carpeting down and finish the inside there. So uh, I'll go inside right now. Follow me and we'll show you what we're going to do there. Okay, we've got our harness connected here to the switch and we duct taped it to the 
So this area here, and also we put uh, some tape around it here so the harness is going to stay in place. So let's move into the trunk and we can hook up the wires and get the taillights to work now. This is your brake wire here that's uh, coming out of this terminal here. And this is the brake uh, line going to the back. So the power is coming here. And then once the switch is activated, it's going to this wire here back to your stop lights or your brake lights on the back. So uh, that's hooked up. I'll show you how we set the switch in the inside and then uh, we'll uh, proceed on to the next uh, operation here, next procedure. Okay, we have checked the switch and it's on, so what we have to do is we have to turn this switch in one more full turn like that. And now we'll plug this back in and recheck our brakes in the back and make sure you can see how that all works right here. So we'll just check that and if that's good then what we do is we tighten up this lock nut here and then we'll put on our dust cover. So I'll just bring that nut up there close right here and keep that all in position. So we'll just check the brakes now. Okay just slightly tap on the brake. Tap on it a couple times. I'm using a needle nose pliers to get in here and then just tighten that that nut on the switch right here and that is will secure the switch. Now you're you're good we can go on with the dust cover. So I'll put the dust cover on now and let me just pull this back. And this is the way it goes, just like this. Now that protects you know, everything from dust and water whatever falls down so the whole assembly is protected here so we'll get a wrench and tighten that up and this installation is done here now we'll put the flat pedal on for the z-bar linkage and uh, we're all set to go so we'll get that and proceed on to that next uh, operation here on next now here's the z-bar flat pedal we're going to put in we have a shoulder bolt so we put it in from this side here Put your pedal in place. Now there's a spring back here. You'll see is where it's marked yellow. It attaches to the speed ball there. So this just fits into the hinge on the pan. And then we put this little nut on right here. And uh, take your Allen wrench and eight millimeter and tighten it up. Just snug it in place. Okay, we're finished with the installation. You see the back of the carping here just covers over that switch, protects that too. We've got the speed ball assembled on here too, so that's ready to go. Brake light is working awesome. So that completes the installation of the new clutch shaft, the uh, smart electric brake light switch, and the speed ball. Okay, now we've seen that successful installation on that 62 Volkswagen. Now we're going to look at this display I have here again and look at these components. And you may, if you have to, look at this again so you really understand how to install this product. So this is zero in right in here. Now one thing that's important, I want to tell you before we go into that, is this tab on here. I've seen it in a lot of cases where this tab is not installed properly. Let me just show you how this is supposed to be installed. Some people are taking it from this side and bending it over and it's barely contacting that pin. This is the way this tab is to work. Bend down and hold that brake pin in so it doesn't come out. Okay, now let's look at our the uh, smart electric brake light switch assembly. It's been installed and uh, I'll show you the components here and this switch. And let me just describe this switch here. Now this is electric brake light switch is used on the cars today and all cars today have electric brake light switches now this is not a hot or a ground this is just hot going in and it will be hot coming out uh, and the way that switch works is when this plunger right here is all the way in it shuts off the connection between these two connectors so when this plunger is released now the current is going to go from one side to the other so this is the hot coming in, and this is the hot going back to your brake light switches, or probably your brake lights in the back. Okay, now, this is the actuator that you saw. 
uh, being installed in that 62. It goes on your master, your brake, uh, uh, brake push rod right here, and this is that interlocking actuator right here. Now look at these components as they move. Now I show it, told you about the switch here. So now this switch is already compressed all the way in. So now it'll be released when I press in on the brake. And notice what happens. The brake light comes on. So you can see this swing arm right here working off this actuator. And that is making the brake lights function in the back. So when you put the switch in, you turn, you connect up all your wiring to the fuse panel. You turn your ignition switch on. Now you're going to have power coming to one side of this switch here. Okay? And power will come back out of that switch going back to your tail lights. So when you turn the ignition key on, if the lights are on in the back, all you do is unplug these and turn this switch in complete revolution. Plug the wires in. If the lights are still on, do that again until the lights go out. And then, once the lights go out in the back, then this is functioning properly, and that is what it's designed to do. And it will function every time just like this. So you don't have to worry about the hydraulic switch. We're connecting into that system, so now you're going to have a backup up between the two, the hydraulic and the electric working together. So that's the kit right here, uh, Smart Electric Brake Light Switch Assembly. Go to unique-parts.com and learn more information or check this out on the Samba.